morning. Great. Uh, it's nice to be with you this morning. It's a great uh, honor, I guess, to start the whole thing off uh, here today. So what I want to do first is give you just one or two little slides, just give my set up my credibility a little bit. Is that okay? Just just in terms of um, the sort of things I've been involved in over the years. Yeah? And it's what I've learned out of that I want to share with you today. Yeah? So it's real life experiences. The experiences that people would have had going into any number of companies. I'll give you an overview of those companies I've been working with. Both people who have um, moved from those companies to other co are moved into those companies, but also those who want to move internally and how they go about doing that. So if that's the objective, then we've got to look at how we best present ourselves in any of those situations. And there's one big secret I've learned over that period of time I want to share with you at this seminar. Is that okay? Does that give you a reasonable overview of what we're talking about? So I'm going to use some PowerPoint, but I promise you I won't hit you with too much PowerPoint. Okay. So uh, modesty is one of my strongest suits, uh, just working on humility, but aside from that I'm perfect. So, uh, facilitate career coaching think tanks within organizations, CV and interview and job search, skills training, uh, work with site leaders, managers and emerging leaders. So I think this, to be fair to those who are coming from straight out of college, it's not really pitched at you, but I think uh, it will be helpful nevertheless. Is that okay, just in terms of directions? But I think it's going to be more powerful for those of you who have that some, at least a couple of years experience working in the working environment. Uh, management skills and leadership development, so that's part of what I do. Change management, but this is the last thing I want to say. So all that psychometric nonsense, and I say that has been one who's got invested some time in that. Um, I know a little bit about that as well. Our other area of expertise. Um, I'm not looking for a job of you guys, right? But I do want to say, this is where I'm coming from. I work with all of those companies. Is that okay over the last years? You can see them. SAP, Oric, or Pfizer, all those top ones. Citibank, AIB. I work with all of these organizations, um, helping them with career development. But there's one thing I've learned. And can I say that most candidates don't do this in their whole whole process of applying for a job. They don't think to do this, and I think this is a huge, huge help. When I say most don't, I think less than 10%. So let me, let me introduce you to that idea. So that's what this seminar is about. A seminar will show you how to deliver a powerful integrated message. Emphasis on integrated. A message founded on the job spec, and that's key to everything, guys. Is that okay? Uh, then present it on your CV and deliver it at the interview. So you want, if I work with site leaders, I'll be saying to them, listen, your CV is just your written proposal, then you go to the interview and that's your oral presentation, but the same message should be across both. Yeah? Is that okay? Where does that message come from? It doesn't come from your head or sitting, you know, um, on top of your mountain going, what's the ultimate thing I'm going to say about myself? You're not trying to capture your career. You're not trying to do a summary of your career. You're not actually trying to present a curriculum vitae. Is that a, get the idea? Because a curriculum vitae suggests that you're trying to capture your career and put it in a document and put it all there, yeah? And the American term is a resume. And what I'm saying to you is don't do that. That's a misnomer. What you're actually trying to do, just to dumb it right down, but this is where the secret is, what you're trying to do is play Snap. You know the card game? All the kids, you play with kids. Two people involved, you and the employer. Who plays the card first? The employer does. They put a job spec down on the table. Is that, you get that analogy? If you want to win at Snap, you don't fan out all your cards in front of the child. You distract the child, you have a rummage through your cards and pull out the ten of diamonds because they play the ten of clubs. You get the idea? The same approach you've got to take with the whole process, be it the interview, be it the CV. You want to first look at what the card has been played, the ten of clubs, 
and you want to have a look through your experience and match it and allow the next uh, employer or your manager if you're internally uh, shall it snap. You get the principle? Yeah? So, hence, and I just want to say this, most candidates do not do that. I'm not just speaking out of a, academically out of a book or anything else. This is maybe in all over the country. Site leaders down to operators. They're not doing this sort of thing and it's key to success. So if you get this one message out of our time together, it will be helpful. The question is, how do you go about doing that? I've talked about SNAP here. Yeah? I've, I've broken it down to mean a, a simple S, no-nonsense approach to presentations. Is that okay, guys? Like if I was to take a mobile phone off you now and sell it back to you, lousy sales would be an engineering sale. 1,001 speed dial numbers, weighs so much. The sizes, this, that, and the other. It's considered lousy sales. Where if I in some way link it to your specific needs, I, it's considered good sales. And that's the process I want you to carry through in uh, your CV interview preparation. But, so that's the sequence, isn't it? The employer plays a card first, the job spec, say the seven of clubs or the ten of clubs. You have the ten of diamonds and play it. Let the employer sh shout snap. Got it in principle, but how do you do it, Pat? That's all very good, but how do I go about doing that? Let me show you how to go about doing that now. Find the diamonds in the job spec. Make a list of all the high value attributes diamonds from the job spec. Is that okay as a principle? But is, can you see it's not terribly helpful because you don't know what it is yet? Have I got people following me here? Are you okay on this? Yeah? You get a great, that's not of encouragement, that's good. Um, arrange them, so what you want to do, you're looking at your CV and you want to arrange what I call a snap statement. You get the idea, it's a snap statement. Please don't write snap statement on your CV. Okay? Um, also, I will argue, don't write profile on your CV either. I've spoken to an awful lot of HR people. I know there's exceptions, but I've spoken to enough of them to say to you that they've stopped in many ways reading profiles. Why do they stop reading profiles? Because typically they say something like, I'm the most enthusiastic young one you ever met in your life. Or some variant of that. So they tend to jump over them and get into the meat of the job. You know all the different things you did? So they're tending not to, uh, to spend too much time in that. So I'm of a mind, don't call a profile, let them read the first sentence. But you've got to read, but you've got to write the first sentence awfully, awfully well. And here's how you go about writing it. Okay, the first sentence you're going to put in there, the title of the job. And here's the first area I usually get a lot of controversy and push back on. It's not your title, it's their title. So I've got two checkers in there. You obviously, if you're an operator, you can't go for the managing director's job and just call yourself a managing director. So two checkers, and these are the checkers. Hand and heart, when I read the job spec, does it describe me? Is that okay? And the answer to that is yes. Second question is, would my referee be comfortable with me calling myself that? Yeah? If both of those are true, then use their title, not yours. Key to good communication is use the other person's language. Are we okay on that so far? Second thing they'll have in their qualifications, they like that. Or it could be, the second thing could be the number of years that you worked in it. Yeah? And after that you're looking at the environment. So if you're looking at one of these, you know the pharmaceutical companies I mentioned earlier up there? FDA is the environment, isn't it? SAP might be the environment, Oracle might be the environment, financial sector might be the environment, telecoms industry, see where I'm going? Give that to them, and then the industry involved in. That's usually a full stop at that stage. The question is, will they read the second sentence? And since that is taken from their job spec, you're just giving them back what they're looking for, your plans now. I think they'll look, what well, I know, they'll look at the second sentence. The second sentence should be the meat of the job. I have extensive experience, you won't use a personal pronoun, you use extensive experience in, 
Tonchi language, yeah, and create a list using comments. What list are you going? What are you going to populate that list with? The stuff that's in their job spec. Bang snap! Just give them it back without telling porcupines. So you're, you're going to change around that way and give it back to them there. The third sentence is optional. Um, sometimes applies, doesn't apply. It'll be determined by the job spec. So in the job spec, if they want to know about your leadership style, if they want to know about you interfacing with other groups, multidisciplinary groups, leading them, liaising with them or whatever, that's where you put it into the third sentence. So you might say something like, achieved all the above, that long list, yeah, through managing a team of six people, leading projects, doing this, that, the other. Is that okay? Again, get away from the idea you're sitting on top of your mountain wondering, what's the ultimate thing I could say for myself? You're not there. You're down and dirty with the job spec, and you're giving it straight back to them. It's also like DAW, isn't it? It's so also very obvious. But I can tell you, most people don't do it. And it makes a huge difference. And I'll explain why it'll make a huge difference in just a moment as we just complete this. So this is our fourth sentence. This is the first time I'm going to use the personal pronoun. So, okay, I am a, and give them back whatever they have in their student spec. Excellent team player, works on their own initiative, you know, communicator, you know the line. But again, give them back what they have, so that you get, give them the impression that you're speaking their language and you're tipping all their their uh, other things they're looking for. You're playing snap. Is that okay? I want to get you away from fanning out all your cards. I worked on this project. I did that. I did the other. Can't you see that I'm brilliant? That's not the name of the game. The name of the game is, please solve my problem. This is my problem. I need somebody to do this for me. Is in your repertoire all of those talents and abilities? Is this resonating with you? I can see how it's nodding. I think it is, yeah? But you, all you can you see is dull. Like, why aren't we all doing it? Can I tell you we're not? Some of us are, to great effect, but most of us aren't. So that's what I want to say to you this morning. Um, Oh yeah, okay. How are you actually going to, where are you going to put it on your CV? Yeah? And what should be on the first part of my CV? Let's go back to CVs just for a moment. I'll keep an eye on the time. Um, go back to CVs again. How many pages do you reckon should be in your CV? And if I was running a workshop, thank you. It's, uh, it's two. And it shouldn't be any more than two. Why? The reason why is very, very simple. They've done these time and motion studies where, you know, HR have got all your pilot CVs in front of them and they're asking themselves the question, who are we going to call for an interview? Do you know how long they're taking to make that decision? Would you be surprised to hear some on the order of 20 to 30 seconds? Is there any point in writing a five or six page CV? No. Keep that going though, keep that basic thought going does not have implications in those two pages. Which is the most important page of the two pages? Da, first page. Everyone agreed? What's the most important part of the first page? The top half, because that's what they read first, like a newspaper. Are we good? So I'm of a mind, put nothing in the top half of your front page except what's absolutely essential. Right? And is not a distraction for the main thing you want to say in there, which is snap. A snap statement, yeah? So, here's what I suggest to you you should put in your, the, on the top half of the front page of your CV. Your name. Do you need critical and vitae in 16 font and bold right across the top of your CV? No! Has anyone ever looked at a CV and not known it to be a CV? Yeah? Just doing a follow? Again, your name. Do I need to put the word N-A-N-E colon tat there? Do you see it on CVs? You do. It's a distraction. Don't do it. It's only nonsense. Yeah? Can you see that an address doesn't require, like, 
new road goal. It does not require, how do you spell address? A B T R E S S colon. Yeah? Are we good? Now, I'm not being pedantic, there's a reason for it. Can you see what I'm trying to do is, is give emphasis to something without distraction? That's what I'm trying to achieve. So, hence, put your name in there in bold and center it. I think it looks better there. Put it off to the left or right, care less. It's just a stylistic thing. Uh, your address goes in next. Then, contact information. Just put in your mobile and your email. Yeah? And all in one line. Remember when years ago you used to go, my home number, my work number, my mobile number, all done? No. Just put in just put in one line across there, no distractions, give them all the key information. Here's where you put your snap statement. Now again, please don't call it snap statement. Yeah, on your CD. And here's what you put it in here. So, it's four sentences. And the, this is a paragraph, it's not bullet pointed, because it's distinct from everything else in the CV. You put it all in bold when you're finished, force them to read this. This is where you've done all the hard work for them. You've gone through their job spec, maybe two, three pages. You funneled it down to a four sentence statement, yeah? And you put it in here. So again, these are the four sentences from our previous work. Remember those from the previous slide? And if you contact me, I'm going to be working outside, just here for a bit outside. So if anyone would even want these slides, you can organize that for them as well. Maybe we can give you a number and so forth. Um, and you've got all of those happening in there. Yeah? Very good. Yeah? It's not all very obvious. And it's only after that you'll start into your career and career history and you'll work your way back through all of that. Get the idea, guys? It, if you set up your CV in this manner here, keep it simple like that and how you might lay it out, it'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes for every subsequent job spec you want to work on. So I'm saying you need a different CV for every job you go for. Because you're going to go through this process. Are we good? How do you carry that over then into the interview? Because I said I'm going to carry the lot. So your interview, guys. You're now going to go to the interview. And this is a discipline you require. It'll take ages to require it. Or you can listen to me for two seconds and I'll tell you how to do it. Right? How do you get your key message which is a basically an expansion on your snap statement. How do I get that key message across at an interview? Here's the discipline you require. I don't care what you ask me, you only get one answer. Will you do that again? I don't care what you're asking, you're only getting one answer. Yeah? And I'll show you how to do that. Um, at the beginning and at the end of the interview is the two most important places. That's why I'm telling you, you have to put it in there at the start. There's a thing in psychology called recency and primacy. Don't worry about that. Every training course you ever went to in all your days, yeah? You were right in there at the start. You had your lunch, you fell asleep. And it, as you wound up at the end, you came back in there. So the big impact moments, as you would suspect, for an interview or at the beginning and at the end. Is that okay guys? Can you see that to be the case? Yeah, you know, socially and everything else. So the discipline you must have is, I need to get my key message across to them at the beginning. Hence the discipline. I don't care what you ask me, you only get one answer. And I'll give you a couple of examples of the questions you might get at an interview. Oh, we don't have time. We need to move along. Therefore, deliver your message at the beginning and the end of the interview. Are we good? Uh, your key message is an expansion of your four sentence snap thing. So you're not learning them off in verse. You might use them as the, on your fingers, you know, key, key points I want to make. You might speak to them for five minutes, showing examples and so forth. How to deliver the message at the beginning and the end of the thing. So how do you go about doing it? As I said, the first thing that happens when you go into an interview is they try to relax you. So they'll talk about the weather. Do you have any problem with the traffic up there at the roundabout? Any problem with park? You know, that sort of thing. They might actually drop to the end of your CV where you might have some personal information in there about 
reading you're interested in or whatever, and they might use that as an icebreaker. The next question they ask you, they're only going to get one answer. Okay? Tell us a little bit about yourself, Pat. An interview question you get at the start of an interview. Everyone agreed? Why do you think you're a good fit for this role? Yeah? They're only going to get one answer, which is a snap statement. I'm an engineer with 10 years of experience working in an FDA regulated environment. I've been involved in so many projects doing this, that and the other. I believe in here that you guys are involved in a similar sort of thing. Conversation, you get across your key points, you do not start in national school. Yeah? Do candidates do it? They do. Do you know what a variant on that? They think it's a deeply profound existential question. Tell us a little bit about yourself. It's not. It's about a stupid game called Snap. Yeah? And just give them that back. I think I'm getting through to a couple of you. So if you are nodding like this, yeah, this is making sense. Yeah? Probably because you've been interviewers and you've interviewed people where they've wandered all over the place. How do you stay focused? Play Snap. Are we good? Um, no matter what they ask, that's what you're going to do. What's the next one there? At the end of the interview, you'll be asked, do you have any questions? Now, this does take a little bit of experience and practice. It does take a little bit of coaching. It does take a level of confidence. All interviews end with, as I'm coming to the end of this, all of them end with, do you have any questions for us? Yeah? Or you can force them to end that way. Sorry, just before we finish up, I have one or two wee questions. Yes, sure. What are they? So you can see, you can force that situation at the end. And then you're going to put your snap statement back into them at the end in the form of a question. Okay? The way you would do it is, I think it was you and me or John, they had mentioned during the interview that training was a part of my role as an engineer. So am I right in my understanding? Hear the question? The ideal candidate for this role should have a good, strong mentoring, coaching attribute and snap. Are we good? Psychologically, it's very strong. They're going to be nodding like that at you, but at you. So it's a great end to it. So you create two bookends, one at the beginning and one at the end. Now, is it repetition, is repetitious? To the point of boring for the interviewers, it's not. It's probably been an hour since you first mentioned it at the, at the start. I'm trying to give it to you in a half hour. Like we could go into it in a little bit more detail, but I think you're getting the basic principle, are you? Um, so then, let's see what we've got left here. So deliver your key message again, this time in the form of a question. Oh, that's it. Okay, got it. Got it done with uh, four minutes to spare. So that's on eight. Basically where you want to start with is the job spec. You, that job spec is going to change for every job you go for. They're going to change their languaging. So say you're working at the moment in Boston, in Galway, whatever. You're speaking Bostonese. Yeah? Or you're working in one of the banks, you're speaking AIBs. And what, to be a good communicator, to be able to communicate well, you need to use the other person's language. You know from that ancient text that we all grew up with and went to confirmation services and we heard it all. They all heard in their own language. Do you get the importance of that? Everyone hears in their own language. So you want to give them back the language that's in that organization if you want to be a good communicator. Where will you find their language? In the stupid job spec. You will also find it on their websites, won't you? And so for how, how they express things. So don't be precious about the way I express things. Be a good communicator and use the other person's language. Are we good? Yeah? And that's the process you want to go through. The rest of your CV will fall into place after that. How do I go about writing bullet points? Can't do it now for you, but the order of your bullet points will be determined by what? The job. Spec. You know, because I'm a lazy reader, like an awful lot of other people, I only read your first two, three, maximum four bullet points. So if you've got seven, eight, nine, I'm not going to see them. But seven, eight, nine maybe should be the first two or three. What determines it? The job spec. You just want to put them down. If you want to talk about main achievements, 
What main achievement are you going to talk about? The one that matches the jump spec and give it straight back to them. Are we good? Get the basic idea? Are you all happy enough with that? Great, I got a thumbs up from Kevin, and he's the one person in the room we can't ignore because he's organising it all. But the rest of you got it, didn't you? I think a significant number got it. I'm going to be just on the table just outside, so if there's an opportunity to, to uh, take a chat with me, take it. Okay, thanks very much.